Discord. Okay. So, uh, call pure any logic. If you have a model uh, loaded, close it by file close or file close all or what have you. Okay. We go with this. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do is build up a little model. And previously we modified models, but here we're going to build up our first one. Okay. So I'm going to go file new, and this will be called system dynamics SIR initial. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say 2024 um, in unearth the class and uh, V1. Okay. Um, and you notice one of the things we need to specify is the time unit. Okay. Uh, and I'd like you to choose the time unit of days here. Okay. Days. So make sure this is all one identifier. Make sure it's all one word. Um, uh, you can use um, under bars where you might normally put a space. So SIR initial 2024 V1, okay? And my goodness, my goodness. Well, um, we can, I will bear with this. Uh, it may impede my ability to post this model. Um, okay. Um, so when you build the model, um, when, when you first create the model, you'll see that there's a main, uh, which is uh, the sort of global overall environment for the model, and there's a default scenario called simulator. Okay, we're going to make use of these. And for system dynamics, uh, very commonly we we make use of this global environment as our point of focus. Okay. So what we're going to do is get some experience with stocks and flows, okay? Um, and we're going to build little, little trivial bits and pieces of models and observe the behavior from that and make sure it accords with our understanding of how stocks and flows work. Build that understanding. Are we okay with this? Okay. So, um, We are going to go to the palette here. And we're going to go to a different area of the palette. Previously, we made use of this agent part of the palette for agent-based modeling. This time, we're going to use the thing just above it and just below the fluid library, which is system dynamics. Okay. And you'll notice the system dynamics palette um, has a bunch of these building blocks, including the two key building blocks, which are about to close. It's like the Greek chorus building joy in my heart. Um, okay, this is this is fantastic. Okay, um, uh, so I'd like you to go there, click on the stock, and drag in a stock. Okay, and I'm going to call it infective here. Okay, infective, and I think I'll I'll magnify this. So you can see the model in it, the fullness of its glory. Um, infective, okay? And um, you notice when we specify a stock, there's uh, some particular value we have to specify for that stock. What is that value we have to specify for the stock? It's initial value. That's the, it's the value at which it starts uh, uh, um, over time. So to, to avoid this annoying message, pardon me, I'm just going to see if I can disable autosave. This is uh, causing me, this silicon dysfunction is causing me some real displeasure and um, I will try to keep myself to proper English um, during this lecture, but we're gonna need to address this. Okay, so we have an infective and we're gonna start with, um, uh, we'll, we'll start with a hundred infectives, okay? Okay, 
it's trying my trying to tempt me into putting part of the um full and proper use of the king sigma. Okay. Um next I'm gonna drag in uh recovered, a stock called recovered. Notice I'm capitalizing these names matter. Uh, folks, they communicate. And often it's good to have conventions. My particular convention to which I adhere, it's that stocks are given names to begin with capital letters. Well, as flows, stocks are kind of the nouns. These are kind of the, the, the things uh, in the model. They're the current state of the model. And the verbs are the flows. They're the points of action. Okay. So we're going to have infectives and recoveds, and I'm going to put in, and I'm going to leave the initial value for recovered as zero, and I'm going to put in a flow between them. And, oh, I didn't give quite enough space, so I'll, I'll drag them slightly more apart, or you can drag it in and then futz with the end of the flow. If it didn't connect, if it, like, overshot it, oh, come on, um, if it overshot it or whatever, you can always click here, it'll put a, a cloud, and you can always go dock it, make sure it turns green, because green is the color. And connectivity is the game, okay? Are we okay with this? Now, for this flow, we're going to call this recovery with a lowercase r. Are we okay? Okay. Okay. And we're going to set it to be, no, so this is a flow. Do you remember when I said, in, in that video, flows are rates. I, I'm not actually referred to it earlier. Um, when she was, was reasoning, I'm trying to reason about the, the rates and, 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 and I admire, you know, for, for thinking about these issues. And one area where this really comes in is thinking about stocks. Stocks represent the state of the system. At any one time, you could freeze time and you could count the number that are people that are infected and the number of covered. A flow is instead, it describes a rate. The number of people like over time are getting recovered. It's like 10 people per day. And that number would be very different if, again, if I asked, you know, well, people, Per year that are recovering, that would be a very different number than people per day, right? The 10 people per day, that might be 3,650 people per year, 365 times that, right? Um, so if I put a number one in the value of recovery, um, what, uh, what does that mean? Yes, one yeah. person recovers per day. One person recovers per day. So I'm, I'm going to put one. This is generally going to depart from practice. Generally speaking, flows are not fixed quantities because, amongst other things, we have physical quantities in the world that can't be drawn negative, like the number of people affected, right? But just we're going to watch the dynamics here, okay? We're going to watch these dynamics, okay? Okay, so. This is a runnable model. I want to remind us we have 100 people starting an infective. We have zero people starting already recovered. And we have one person recovering per day. So the rate at which this is flowing is one person per day. What sort of behavior would we see as a result? From yes. Uh, so, um, Ted? Yeah, and the infection will go down by one person every day, and recovery will be okay. by one. Okay, so if if we and to be fair to this side of the classroom, I'll, I'll draw on on this board. If we had a figure of time on this axis, um, and I apologize to those for attending remote. Like, let's let's see if I can at least gesture in terms of what I'm writing on the board. If we have time on the x-axis and number of people infected on the y-axis, um, what's the initial value of number of people infected? So time zero, it's 100. 100. What would this curve look like? Okay. Okay, so 
if we're just plotting 10 cents, it's normally one step ahead of us, which is great. The number, of, if we just were to plot number of infectives, what would we see? It'd be going down, okay. Would it be going down sort of faster and then slower or slower and then faster or just at a, at a fixed rate? A fixed rate, right? It'll be going down at some, right? And some, uh, some fixed slope, right? If you're wondering why, perhaps on that pop quiz zero this relates to this. Um, and when would you expect it to hit zero? 100, 100 days, right? One person is being debited from this every day. Person a day. And after 100 days, it's going to be drawn negative, right? How do you order to depict here the number of people in the recovered stuff? Ken said it earlier. Good. And so it starts at zero. And then it rises such that it gets up to 100 by day what? 100. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to take my word for it, nor sort of pause it yourself. We can actually go run it, right? And it's probably going to be obnoxious here um, about this. Oh, it, it wasn't obnoxious. Great. Um, Okay, so we could click on this and we could plot it out and we would see a graph quite similar to what we were talking about. Um, we could speed it up and time, time will run forward faster and it'll be going to time 100 and it's going to be hitting, it's going to be hitting zero and it's going to be going what? negative, right? Which is not this, right? Um, uh, and forgive the slight kink here, I'm not an artist and you can see why. Um, okay, uh, but similarly, we could plot, can we not, um, the, the, uh, the graph here, right? Um, over time of the number of people recovered, right? But of course, the world doesn't have, you know, the capacity for many physical quantities to go negative, right? We might informally talk about negative people, but this isn't what we need, right? So, um, so uh, yeah, just because neg uh, infectives are going negative um, uh, in the model, I mean, that that runs afoul of our understanding of the world that, what can people are, quantities or physical quantities that can't be drained into negative. So we're going to put in place a basic structure. It's not one of the most basic building blocks, stocks and flows, the most fundamental of them, but it's one level up. It's going to be your first experience of this slightly higher level structure. So I'm going to say that there's going to be a mean time to recover, okay? So mean, or I'll call it mean time infectious, okay? Mean time infectious. Are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to make it a default value of 10 days, okay? And now I'm going to, so, so right now this says mean time and factor. Is, like if I just put it there, does that actually make it be, make it happen? No, you have to put in a logic to make it mean time and factor. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that now. This is gonna be one of the most basic types of structures. And you're gonna see two important, slightly higher level structures emerge from that. One is sort of part of another. Okay, so we're going to take in a link and what thing needs to depend on the mean time infectious? If the mean time infectious is really, really long, I'm going to argue that it's going to affect something. That's not the mean time infectious is really, really short. If people recover in like in an hour, 
it's going to affect something up to something in, in a different way. What what is going to be affected by the meantime effect? The recovery. Yeah, your name? Ethan. Ethan. The recovery. Yeah. Now, remember, the flows are the verbs here. Okay. Um, and the nouns are the subs. So the action is taking place at the flow. You wouldn't connect this to a stock. That wouldn't make sense. Stocks evolve purely after the initial time. We give them an, an, an initial value. After that, they evolve purely on account of the what? The flows. The fact that we have this recovery flow out of infective dictated how the number of infectives evolve, right? The fact that there was this flow into recovery dictated how that evolved. All we have to specify was that 100 people began an infective, and from then on, its value was dictated by that flow. So it's really, when, when we talk about characterizing how things change over time, we're talking about changing the flows. Are people comfortable with that? The flows are the, 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 the uh, points of action in the model. That's where things change. There's, in fact, the rates of change. Are we okay with this? Trying to get some key notions part. Okay, so I'm saying the rate of recovery, the number of people recovering per day, will depend on how long people spend in Texas. They're only infectious for that one. Um, they're going to leave much more quickly than if they're infectious for the rest of their life, you know, or, or for 100 years. Um, they're going to leave here very slowly because of set of infected. But it has to depend on something else. We saw it because it went negative before. It needs to depend on something else. What is that other thing? Stop. The stock. Yeah. Look, if there's nobody infectious, infective, how many people are going to be recovering for that? No. No one's there to recover. If there's a billion people infective, there's going to be. Chances are, for any reasonable mean time infectious, you know, a lot of people recover, right? It, obviously, it depends on infected. In fact, the fact that it went negative was a reflection that we didn't capture that dependency. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have it depend on infective as well. And now we, we have the components to give the formula for recovery. And I'm going to give you a formula here. Okay, the rate of recovery, the number of people recovering per day is going to be the number of infectives. So infective, so I'm, I'm editing in recovery in this properties, I'm editing and the formula for the rate of recovery is given by infective divided by mean time infectious. Okay, um, mean time infectious. By the way, you can do autocomplete with control space. Or on a Mac, it's options. Yes, yes. Um, okay, yes. Um, okay, so so let's think about this. Why? Imagine that your mean time in fact is in ten years. Okay. Imagine there's a hundred people in fact so in your. People recover on average every 10 days. About what fraction of the people recover per day? If it, if it, if it takes them on average 10 days to recover, and you thought about people you know, in a situation where they're infected, if it takes on average 10 days, you might think about one tenth of those people recover per day. Mm -hmm. so if there's 100 people infected, you might think one tenth of them will be recovering per day, one over the mean time infected. By contrast, if if people recover in a day, you'd expect if there are 100 people sick, then on a per day basis, 100 people might be within that day. All, all because it's it's within a within a day on average. If they recover in 100 days, maybe it'll be about one person per day. 100 people, possibly, and, and about 100 of them would leave per day. So the number of people leaving 
the stock, the rate at which people leave the stock is effective divided by mean time factors. Okay. Um, and this is a formula to which we'll come back again and again in this course. Um, you'll see this, a version of this for ancient based models too. Okay. Um, and it's related to the rate by which people become infectious. Okay, so you're going to tell me. We, we, thank you, Bruno. Um, you told me, you, we talked about before what the dynamics of this. We saw it and you observed behavior. Mm -hmm. Although, Ron, for the impoverished, the fashion of impoverished aesthetics. Um, but a communicative. Here, what? how is this curve going to be different? So for us now, and with an eye towards those on the other side, if we were to draw this out, by the way, I'll try to take photos of these for, for those who are remote and post them to the, the site. What would we expect to see now? If we, so the number of infections people start at 100, how would that change over time now? Okay, so Ethan says it will come down over time. And how will it come down, Ken? Won't it make like a line like this, kind of like a logarithm? Because you're divide your mean time is divided by your infected. So it's going to get smaller in the denominator. Well, your, or it's, it's smaller in the numerator, and the denominator remains the same, so the decimal gets. That's right. So at first, there's 100 people in, in here. And so there's quite a few people that are going to be leaving per day as a result. But over time, that number of people who are in fact still remaining infectious is going down. So the number of people leaving per day will be going down. If there's only one person remaining infected, the, the rate, the number of people per day leaving is going to be much smaller. Okay, so at first, it'll be draining more quickly. And then it will be draining more slowly. Okay. Um, what would you expect? What would you expect for the number of recovered so far? Anyone? Yes. Uh, speak, uh, Dan. Yeah. The inverse of so. Okay. Inverse of the sets of like. You, you got the right gist yeah. with it. Um, you do it in three quickly and then slowly. Do That's it. right, 100 minus it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we might see something like that. But let's not trust our intuitions alone. Computers can, can, can you know, simulate these things in a fully consistent way far quicker than, than we can think about them. Uh, it's good to think about it, but let's test our intuitions in the crucible of of direct uh, computational experiments. And you'll notice indeed, it's coming down faster at first and then slower later, right? And and that reflects the fact there's more people there at first and then fewer people later. And the number of recoveds here is going to be rising faster at first, but kind of plateauing as it gets closer and closer to what? To 100, right? Yeah. Almost everyone is gone. So what we see here is actually emblematic of a what feedback, anyone? The balancing feedback. And the, let, me, let me walk you through this a little bit. Hmm? Um, so the more people there are in infective, if we add a bunch of people to infective, it leads the number of people recovering per unit time to be higher, which drains the number of infective down faster. So there's actually a feedback here. You can't easily see it, but one link of it is this one. It's the number of infectives goes up, there's the number of recovers goes up or down compared to the value it otherwise would have had happen. It goes up. As the number of infective goes up, the rate of Recovering people per day recovering is at higher or lower. If we have, if we have, if we consider, okay, there's zero infectives, how many people are going to leave? Zero. zero. If we have 100 infectives, there's going to be more people leaving. So it's a plus length this way, 
And if you have a flow out of a sock, there's a negative, like it's drawing down the sock. It's drawing it down, here, pulling values out of it. So there's a negative link back from this because it's, it's flowing out. Are we okay with that idea? So this is actually a negative feedback loop. Mm -hmm. It's a negative feedback loop. There's not a positive one here because the number of people in the recovered state doesn't make this larger. No, no, no. This is just kind of downstream of, of where the what's determining the action here. This is a negative feedback loop. And you see the behavior that results. And if we experimented with it some more, as I think I will do, thank you very much, um, we would uh, be able to see this. So we could plot this out here and we would see this characteristic behavior. And if we were to pause it and change this suddenly, now we're down to about 26 infectives. If I were to, to go uh, here and, and, and let's see if I can, okay, yeah. Um, I, it looks like in this version of any logic, uh, I can't, oh, here we go, here we go, okay. So if you click on that and you click in here, I'm going to boost this to 150 people. I'm going to boost it up to 150 people. What do you think is going to happen as a result? So it's going to be bigger, but what? What's going to happen as a result? If I now have lots and lots more people, what's what's going to counteract that? What's going to push back the headset? I'm going to have what be bigger now? <laughs> Yes, the rate of recovery is going to be bigger, which is going to draw this down faster. And so we'll pull it back. It resists change. Remember that was that idea for a negative feedback? Negative feedback, a balancing feedback. It wants to be in equilibrium. It wants to be in balance. And here we're perturbing it. We're disturbing it. And it's going to pull back in the same direction. Hmm? Um, so if we if we plot it out, you notice it, it it indeed it rises, but it pulls it back in the same direction. It resists change. And you know, we could we could do the same again and again. We could set it to be a thousand and it would pull back. Here it wants to get a zero. It's trying to drain entirely out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we okay with that? Okay, I'm gonna do just one elaboration of this. We're down to the last few minutes here of of class, but I wanna I wanna draw this idea more. This is called actually a first order delay. Mm -hmm. um, the rate of flow out of this stock is just proportional to linearly dependent on the value of the stock. The rate of the flow is just a constant times the value of the stock, or equally the value of the stock divided by a constant times one over that comes and um you take it either way. Um you can write it as infective divided by some value, you know, some number, or you could write it as I times one over mu, right? I mean same, 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 right? Um so that's called the first order delay. It has a negative feedback. Let's go if we may, put in place a flow into infective. And we're going to be building on this model more. And in fact, you are going to be building on this model more. So this is going to be new infections, new infections, all one word. And just for now, let's keep it simple because we only have a few minutes. I'm going to make the number of new infections 10 people per day, okay? So I just put in a, a flow. I just dragged in a flow into the stock, into infected. And you'll notice the flow comes from a cloud. It just means, hey, this is outside the scope of the model. It's some um, factors we're not going to be simulating. And we're going to have new infections. It's going to be 10 per day. You can tell me. Right. My welcome guesses. 
you know, well, from, I'm trying to think this through. How is the stock going to behave now? We have 10 people per day coming into the stock of infection. But then we have a draining in this way that depends on the number of people infected. After all, we can't have anyone recovering if there's no one to recover, if there's no one infected. How is it going to behave now? Uh, so I, I called on Ethan once or twice, so Francisco. Yeah, so it's going to keep the, like a steady line because it's the same way that's running as we are. Okay, so it's going to be, yeah, Francisco has a really good idea here. And if I'm going to try to frame it a little bit differently, it's going to want to come to a balance. And before the balance that it, to which it was headed again and again was what? How many people affected? Zero. Now it's going to be coming to a balance where something is in balance because what equals what? Inflow equals outflow. And that's what Francisco was saying. You've got people coming in and it's going to want to be in a balance where people going out and the people coming in are, are the same, right? Um, so let's let's go see this if if we if we could. Um so here we're going to have 10 people per day leaving and 10 people per day coming in. And so what's the number of people infections going to be doing? It's going to remain unchanged. It's going to be in stasis, right? It's so like you have a bathtub, of water's coming in. It's not saying, right, it's leaving. It's going to be constant, right? It's going to be different people in the infection state over time conceptually. But... The rate of the inflow is the same as the outflow. Now let's go change that instead to be 50. Oh, sorry, to be five people coming in per day. Okay, five coming in per day. I'm, I'm conscious of the time and we'll be freeing you from this, from this, uh, uh, from this most unpleasant of circumstances in just a moment. So five people coming in per day. What's what's going to happen now? What's going to happen in inflow? So name Theory. So at first it will go down, and why will it go down? Because what? Uh, it's P. Yeah. Yeah. The outflow is greater than the inflow. The outflow is greater than the inflow, so it's going to be dropping initially. And will it drop without limit? Will it be dropping below zero? Now, where will it drop to until what is the case? The outflow is the same as the inflow. Because after all, we already saw that it's not going to decline further there, right? It's going to be in balance. So let's go see. Here it is. Here it is. And when is it in balance? If we have five people coming in per day, it's going to be in balance when outflow is what? Five per day. And so the value of the stock has got to be what? 50. And if we were to perturb it, as perhaps I did by jumping, um, and we were to, so I'm going to pause this for a second and I'm going to go click. Okay, it's being kind of truculent, but um, I'm going to change this to be, I'm going to change it to be, you know, um, 25. What do you think would happen if I change it to be 25? What's the inflow going to be? Five. What's the outflow going to be? If, if I change this to be 25, what's the outflow going to be? 2.5 people per day. So that means the inflow is going to be what compared to the outflow? Bigger. So the stock is going to go up. So it's going to seek this balance again. There it is. I've dragged it down. It's trying to come back to this balance where what equals what? Inflow equals outflow. Now I could perturb it again. I could say, well, my goodness, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this thing for a loop. I'm gonna shift it to 200. 200, my goodness, 200. And what do you think it's gonna do now? If it's 200, what's the out, what's the inflow going to be? If it's 200, what's the inflow going to be? It's going to be the same old value, five per day. The outflow is going to be what? If the value of the stock is 200, the outflow is going to be 20, which means that what is going to be greater than what? 
Our flow is going to be equal to the stock will be going down. And it will continue down until what is the case? Inflow equals outflow. So, so this idea that a negative feedback, remember I told you there's a negative feedback here, it seeks stability, it seeks balance, it seeks a situation where inflow equals outflow. We see it illustrated. You folks have created it on your own computers, this situation where it resists change. It seeks the sense of equilibrium and to return to the sense of equilibrium where inflow equals outflow. This is the feature of a negative feedback. Okay. Okay. For take a minute to decide, but I'll ask you to elaborate. Okay. Okay. That's all we have time for today. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Okay. Thank you. I'm Richard Deshati. I just played. Yes. Yes. No, I did. I, I, I prepared my last one. It's a lot more of your dates for the first time. Awesome. Uh, I'll, uh, Seek to my my facial recognition is is fairly yeah. yeah and so I appreciate the reminder that helps a lot and I will I I thought yes I, I knew immediately once you said Mohammed but I'll 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 see if I can do it reliably okay yeah cool okay yeah uh, I my name is Serge and I missed my quiz because the first one was really